Well, good morning, everybody. Appreciate you coming out on this Pentecostal Sunday. So Pentecost Sunday, we're, I guess we are the Pentecostal Sons, Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. Hey, a couple of announcements before we continue. Next week, we're going to start back up with services, uh, and it'll just be morning worship service only. So no children's church, no nursery. We will start that at 1030. And we will still have the uh, drive-in service going for those that aren't comfortable with coming inside. And also, we'll still be streaming live uh, via Facebook Live for those that want to sit at home and, and uh, if they're com more comfortable there. And the question came up, what about wearing masks? Do we have to wear masks or, or should we wear, wear masks? That is the individual. If you want to wear a mask, you feel free to wear a mask. If you don't want to wear one, you don't have to wear one. So um, if you're wearing one, uh, don't, don't harp on the people that aren't. And if you're not wearing one, don't harp on the people that are. So just individual choice there on that, what you guys want to do. So I'm excited about that, excited about next week. So starting next week at 1030, the Facebook Live service as well as the parking lot or drive-in service will start at the exact same time. Those that choose to park out here like we've been doing, uh, there, the stage won't be here, but you and you'll be able to tune your radios and it doesn't matter or the side or the other side, wherever on, on property, you'll still be able to hear what's going on inside. We will have somebody outside with the uh, the sanctified uh, offering can over there to my right, to your left. So for those that need it, and if you're out there and need to use the restrooms next week, those will be available to you as well. It'll be a touch as touch free as possible for you, those of you coming. Uh, so looking forward to that together. Well, since this is Pentecost Sunday, we're going to talk about baptism in the Holy Spirit. Baptism in the Holy Spirit, one of my favorite subjects. I know I say that a lot about... What's that? I'm going to use one of the other mics. Here we go. Let's try that. Is that good? All right, here we go. You guys can hear me in your cars? Excellent. Very good. Glad to hear it. So we're going to be talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And again, like I said, this is one of my favorite, favorite things to talk about. I love talking about the Lord as it is. And we're going to be talking about uh, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1. Verses 4 through 8, and that's going to be our main focus this morning. Now, we will be covering a lot of different Scripture verses, but Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8 says this. And being assembled together with them, he, talking about Jesus, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore... When they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power after, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that when Jesus left to go to heaven, that you sent the Holy Spirit to come dwell in us. And Father, I pray for all those here present and those listening online and those that may be listening later on. I pray for any that may not have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit that they would receive today in Jesus' name. That hearts would be open and, and ready to receive that baptism and from Him and they would be endued with power from on high to live as witnesses and to be a witness. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in the same way, that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. He wants to fill us with the, His Spirit so we can transform people's lives today. So let's talk about baptism in the Holy Spirit. I have a question. Do you need a fresh fire from heaven? Do you need a fresh fire from heaven? I'm sure every day we need a fresh fire. Leviticus, back in the Old Testament, with the, the, uh, the temple and everything that was going on there, Leviticus 6.13, we find this scripture. It says, a fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. And I believe that applies to us as believers, that a fire should be burning on the inside of us. It should never go out. That fire being the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, so that we can be empowered no matter where we go to live our lives for Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Did you know that you too can walk about with power from God in heaven? That God wants you to walk around in that same power, in his power, and to, to be a witness to others? 
In John 16, 7, Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart... I will send him to you. And Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus was telling his disciples, listen, if I don't go back into heaven, then the Holy Spirit won't come. But if I go, if I go, then the Holy Spirit will come. And the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit is the fact that when Jesus was here in physical form, everybody had to go to him in order to hear him speak. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he can dwell in every single believer across the whole planet. And that's the beauty of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Luke 3, 16, John the Baptist said, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So again, in the same way that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit, he wants to fill us with the Spirit so that we can transform people's lives even today. You know, Jesus, our first point this morning is Jesus has commanded us to go and do this stuff. To go and do this stuff. The first 12, he commissioned them in Luke 9, 1 and 2. Then Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And in Matthew 10, 7 and 8, he says this. And and as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. He's he's saying, listen, if you've received it, then turn around and give it away. If you've received salvation, turn around and give it away. If you've received healing, turn around and give it away. Jesus is commissioning the disciples to go and do those things so that as a witness they can lead many to a saving knowledge of who he is. Next, so once Jesus sent out the 12, the next thing he did was he sent out the 70. Luke 10. One, two, and nine. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest and heal the sick there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. So you as believers, I as a believer, have the same commission today. And how do I know this? Because the Great Commission, when Jesus commissioned the disciples, he said, go and make disciples, teaching them everything, everything that I commanded you to do, they are to do as well. So if he commissioned the disciples to go out and preach the gospel in the kingdom of heaven, then guess what? That commission has stayed the same throughout the ages. It has not changed one single bit. Hallelujah. That commission is the same today. The you and me are called to go into the harvest. How many know that the harvest truly is ripe and ready for the picking? You don't have to go far to find a heathen. Amen? You don't have to go far to find somebody that needs Jesus Christ. You don't have to go far to find that. So you don't have to go to, to, to Zimbabwe or Africa or, or Honduras or any place. like. Now, I'm not saying that's not a bad thing. But what I am saying is that there's plenty right where we are at. There's plenty right where we are at. You guys heard the story about the the, the war that was going on. The the people that were entrenched, the the one side over here, there was a a southern boy over in Germany, and the Germans were on the other side. And and that southern boy had had enough of just facing off. And finally he put his arms down, just got up and started running towards the enemy line, screaming the whole way, ah, ah. And he jumped down in the enemy line. He came to the first enemy he came to, and thumped him on the head, knocked him out, threw him over his shoulder, and ran all the way back to his own encampment and threw the boy down there in the ditch. Everybody was stunned. The enemy was stunned. His own guys were stunned. And and one of his own fellas come up there and looked at that that enemy that's laying down in his ditch. He said, where would you get him from? And that old southern boy said, well, just across in the ditch over yonder, there's plenty more. If you want one, go get you one. And it's the same way with us. There's plenty of heathen out there. If you want one, go get you one. God has empowered us as believers to go and seek and save the lost. He has empowered us with his Holy Spirit to go get some. Amen? 
If we're not doing anything for the kingdom, then we have become what Jesus calls the wicked and lazy servant. And I know that we don't want to be called that. We want to be the good and faithful servants. I want to hear when my day comes and I stand before the King of kings and Lord of lords, I want to hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant. And listen, you don't have to be a pastor to hear those words. You just be a born-again believer that's doing the perfect will of the Father, and you can hear those words when your time comes. Oh, that's good news. I'm about to preach myself happy this morning. Here we go. So he sent, So Jesus sent out the 70. He told them to, to heal the sick there and preach the kingdom of God has come near to you. And now then, after this, so he sent out the 12, he sent out the 70, and now he sends out all of his disciples. And this applies to every single one of us. Mark 16, 15 through 18. I know you're familiar with this passage. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. He doesn't stop there. He says this, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly... It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. If you are a a disciple of Jesus, then Jesus wants you to go into all the world with his power. He didn't leave us powerless. That's what I love about Jesus. He didn't leave this earth and he didn't leave us powerless. But rather when he left, he said, I will send you the promise of the Father who is the Holy Spirit. And he will uh, baptize you with fire. And that's power right there. He will baptize you with his presence and with his power so that you can live as witnesses and be a witness in all the world. Hallelujah. That's shouting news right there. Jesus wants to fill us with his power. That's our point number two this morning. Acts 1, 4 and 5 says this. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, that word, the Greek word baptismo, means to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. It's like the process a cucumber goes through to become a pickle. I think all of us could use some pickling this morning. We could all be pickles for Jesus. And I'm not talking about a sour face saying, oh, you can tell I'm saved. But rather get pickled in the Holy Ghost. Get basked in his presence. Be anointed from top to bottom, from head to toe. And let him saturate us with his presence. Oh, this is exciting. It's so important for us to soak in his presence for extended periods of time. To be anointed. To have the oil of the Holy Spirit. I'm not just smeared all over us, but be basking in it. Like going in for a big swim, if you will. Walk out into the world just dripping with the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Acts 1.8. It's funny. This this one scripture is a scripture that led me towards the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and, And I was in a Baptist church when I memorized this scripture. I love telling this. It was our life or our scripture verse for our youth group. Little did my Baptist youth pastor know. And if he's listening right now, thank you, brother. I appreciate this. Little did he know that this one verse was going to start me on a journey to getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And it started to sink in. Wait a minute. God has something a little bit more for me than just saving me from the pit of hell. And then it dawned on me, there's a whole lot more from my life. There's power involved here somewhere. And that was our theme that year was power. And we had the theme power in Acts 1-8 and everything else. That ultimately led to me getting baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. I'm so glad for my Pentecostal background and for my Baptist youth pastor who led me in this direction. Glory to God. So here we go. You shall receive power. It does not say you might receive power. It does not say this is only for a select few of believers. It says you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Too many people are are born again, which is great, but they are not walking in that power. They're not walking in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They haven't had their Pentecost experience yet. Well, is today's a good day to get that Pentecost experience. It's a Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. So what happened on the day of Pentecost? What we find in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, 
They were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, I love this, suddenly in the Bible. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and sat upon each of them. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled. Everybody say all. I know I can't hear you, but I'm going to say that. I'm going to believe that by faith you just said all. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There you have it, folks, right there, the day of Pentecost. It happened on Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind and baptized those disciples in that upper room. And listen, that wasn't just for those disciples in that upper room. This is something that continues on even until today. When the apostles passed away, the signs and wonders did not pass away with them. When the disciples passed away, the Holy Spirit didn't stop his work. Rather, he started his work on the day of Pentecost. He started right there. And it continues on until this day where we're at right here in 2020. Glory to God. We need a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit's wind and fire today. Point number three this morning. Not only does he bless us with his presence and baptize us, but the Holy Spirit grants gifts. And we're going to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit this morning. We're going to break these down into three different style, or three different uh, types. But first, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10 says this, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. You have communication gifts, and that's prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Prophecy is the uh, divine utterance of the Holy Spirit to encourage, edify, or comfort people. And then there's tongues, the gift of speaking supernaturally in a language not known to the individual. I have heard missionaries time and again when they get one of them that I can think of immediately. He was at a a checkpoint getting ready to go in. His bag was opened up and there was a bunch of stuff there for children, Bibles and different candies and whatnot. And he had no idea to speak what the language was. This guy was looking at him and wanted to know what this was. And he just started speaking in tongues. Well, He had no idea what he just told this fellow. But years later, when he was praying in his spirit, there was a student listening to him pray in his spirit. And the guy was actually recounting what what had happened back on that day when he was going through customs, when he got stopped. And the student stopped praying, and the professor was this missionary professor was continuing to pray in tongues, and he stopped. And the student said, keep praying. You're speaking in my native tongue, and you're telling me a story of what happened a few years ago. And how when you stopped and you started speaking in tongue to that person, you were telling them that this was for the children and what was going to happen. And that person agreed with you. And they let you take that stuff through customs, even though it was illegal to do so. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, goodness. I'm getting excited up here. And then there's, so we've got prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And it's an interpretation of the message that is given in tongues. The next of the three is knowledge gifts. Gifts knowledge gifts. There's the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge and discerning of spirits. The word of wisdom is wisdom to know what to do or how to do it, either for your own life or someone else's. There's the word of knowledge, and that's a knowledge or of an event or other information in someone's life, whether it's past or present, that you were not aware of in the natural. And then there's discerning of spirits, to discern the spirit world, to tell whether something is divine from God or angels, whether it's human of natural origin or demonic from Satan or demons. So, and then we get into the power gifts. Faith, gifts of healings and the working of miracles. Faith is a unique form of faith. Now, this is not the faith that saves you, but rather that supernatural, this is a faith that supernaturally trusts and does not doubt concerning specific matters to believe God for the impossible and to see the impossible come to pass. And there's gifts of healings, and that's healings God performs supernaturally. Like a broken arm comes back to naturally mends right there before your eyes. And then there's the working of miracles. It's the manifestation of power beyond any ordinary course of natural law. This is where something that could never have been done naturally occurs. So let's talk about understanding speaking in tongues. It's, uh, to correctly understand the gift of speaking in tongues, we must realize that there's two kinds of speaking in tongues within the, the Bible. Tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 10b says, to another, different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. And then 1 Corinthians 14, 5, Paul said, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. 
The spiritual gift of tongues is God speaking to the church. This is initiated by the Holy Spirit as He wills it. And not all believers will operate in this spiritual gift. Even so, you, since you're zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Again, 1 Corinthians 14, 12 and 13. Now, when you are exercising the spiritual gift of tongues in a public place, pray for interpretation so that the church can be encouraged. Here at this church, we have tongues and interpretation of tongues. We always want to have the two working together. Otherwise, we don't have the edification that takes place. So we have one that gives the tongue and one that gives the interpretation. Then there's tongues as a personal prayer language. This is the second style, that we're, or second type this morning. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 4, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Tongues as a personal prayer language is the believer speaking to God. And th this gift of tongues speaks mysteries and edifies your spirit, it, building yourself up. All believers can exercise this gift of the Holy Spirit. Mark 16, 17 is a good point there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 27 and 28 says, If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three at most, each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter... Let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. If you don't have the gift of tongues and interpretation, it's still okay to speak to yourself and to God because tongues is as a personal prayer language. So why speak in tongues? Why speak in a personal prayer language? Paul said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Well, we find different scriptures here. One is to edify yourself, building up your spirit, 1 Corinthians 14.4. The second reason is to build up your faith. We find this in Jude 20. Third is to pray the perfect will of God, Romans 8, 26. And number four, to praise and magnify God, Acts 2, 11 and 10, 46. You know, before Peter was filled with the Spirit, he denied Jesus three times in front of a little servant girl. And after, listen, after the Holy Spirit came upon him, he had a new boldness and power so that he came to a point in his life where he was crucified upside down and on a cross, uplifting Jesus Christ. So the question again is, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for every believer? My answer, the short answer is absolutely. The same gift of the Holy Spirit mentioned in Acts 2.38 on the day of Pentecost was poured out in Acts 10.45. In Acts 10.45, we find this. It says the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. Good news, Gentiles. The gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if I could just find where I was at. Here we go. What was the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, the Jewish Christians were convinced that the Gentiles had received the Holy Spirit because they had heard them speak in tongues. Acts 10, 45 through 47 says this, And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. They were baffled, dumbfuddled. As many as came to, with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? <laughs> they had gotten baptized in the Holy Spirit before they'd gotten dunked in the water. Hallelujah. Sometimes the baptism of the Holy Spirit occurs before baptism in water. And again, Acts 10, 47 and 48. Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. So there you have it. They got baptized in the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then they went for a dunk that day, getting baptized, showing the outward sign that there was an inward change on the inside of them. The apostles emphasized the importance of the Holy Spirit. Though the Samaritans believed and were baptized in water, the apostles Peter and John felt it necessary to go to Samaria to impart the Holy Spirit in the new believers. Acts 8, 14 through 16. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. you got to realize, they're sending them now to new believers. 
Why do they want to send them to the new believers? Because they want to get them baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's more to believing than just believing. There's more to this life as a Christian than just believing. Verse 15, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen on none of, upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, they had followed Jesus and received Christ as Savior. How much more do we need the Holy Spirit baptism in our generation today? In this Acts 8, 17, the Holy Spirit was given by the laying on of hands. And Acts 8, 17 says, Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. It appears that all present received the Holy Spirit in, 8, 7, in Acts 8, 17. It says they, re- they all received the Holy Spirit. Who received? Well, all those present received the Holy Spirit in Acts 10, 44. That's where the, in Acts 10 44, the Holy Spirit falls on the Gentiles. It says, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those heard, that heard the word. Next point this morning. The Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. Jesus Christ's final words to his disciples were to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Acts 1-4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, and he goes on. Luke 24-49 says, behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. (laughs) You got to realize now, so the disciples had witnessed Christ being crucified the one that they, they were confident was going to restore Israel at that point. They had seen their Savior crucified upon a cross. They would seen his body come down from that cross, lifeless and limp, dead. They would seen him buried in a tomb. And he was dead for three days. But on the third day, on the third day, Christ rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, he rose in power and glory and majesty. He went to the Father and sprinkled his blood upon the mercy. And he came back and, and showed himself to the disciples. And many saw Christ risen from the dead. And when he was back, he said, now I want you to go to Jerusalem and wait. You wait in Jerusalem for the promise from the Father. So you can be abdued with power from on high. You see, they believe Christ as Savior. They knew Jesus was the Messiah. But there was more to this story. And that was the baptism in the Holy Spirit. To be baptized by Him with the evidence of speaking in tongues. and To walk out in power. To live as witnesses. To be a witness and have the power to live as a witness. He wanted them to wait. And that's what they did. Behold, I send the promises of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And again, that promise is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Acts 1, 4 and 5. The Holy Spirit was promised. And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Why do we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives disciples of Jesus the power. Acts 1.8 again But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see, we could could state that this way. You shall be witnesses to me in Sumter, in South Carolina, in the United States, and to all the earth. And that's what Jesus was telling them. You're going to start right where you're at. First Assembly, I believe we've got a ripe harvest around us. Everywhere we go, there's harvest. Every person we meet has a harvest. You may say, well, I think they go to church. That doesn't matter. There's a lot of people that go to church going to end up in hell. They haven't surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. They still need to hear the gospel, and they may need to hear it five, six, seven times. That's okay. Keep preaching the word. Demonstrate the gospel with power. Demonstrate the gospel with power. The power to witness and to live as witnesses for Christ. So in closing, which is a meaningless preacher's statement, 
how do we receive? How do we receive that baptism in the Holy Spirit? Well, we ask for it. I'm going to give you this simple. It's just as simple as this. You ask for it. Asking is a key to the kingdom of heaven. We know this scripture. You have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. Well, asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not asking amiss. I can tell you that with 100% confidence. Jesus Christ shed his blood shed his blood so that he could give us redemption and freedom from sin, but also he went back to the Father and stayed in heaven so that he could send the promise of the Holy Spirit to them that believe, not just a select few, not just for people that put Pentecostal after their name, not just for, for certain people, but rather for all them that believe. Pastor Jason, are you saying that you believe that baptism in the Holy Spirit is for me? Absolutely. If you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior. But your first step in this parade is to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. To follow after Him. That's the first step. If you haven't received Christ yet, I would encourage you to do so. Because we're not promised tomorrow. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. Why do you need to do that? We've covered this before, but I want to cover it again because it's important. It's so important that I think it should be covered with every single person on this planet. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have broken God's law, and God's law being the Ten Commandments. All of us have probably at least told one lie in our lives. And if we've done that, that means we're a liar. And Jesus said, all liars have their part in the lake of fire. That means we're in trouble on a day of judgment. But I have some good news this morning. That good news is that Jesus came to set the captives free. And he came to redeem us from the curse of sin and law. He came to redeem us from, from the wrath to come. Have you accepted that redemption this morning? If you haven't, it's real simple. You ask Christ to forgive you of your sins. Repent of your ways. And listen, repentance is just as, as simple as this. It's a turn. To repent means to turn from. Turn from those things you once did. Turn from that lifestyle. And turn and put your faith and trust in Christ alone. So that's step number one. And, and then after that, you want to definitely get baptized in water. If you haven't been baptized in water, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get that done for you. The baptism doesn't save you, but rather it's an outward sign of an inward change that has taken place in your life. You're telling the world, hey, I, am, I have died with Christ. You've gone down into the water signifying your death. And then you've raised back up again with him. And now you're living your life for Jesus Christ. And the next is, is to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit again. How do we receive? Listen to what Jesus said in Luke eleven thirteen. 13. He said, if you then, being evil... Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Did, did you see that? How much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? He didn't say, how much more will the Father give the Spirit to only a select few? Or how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to just the certain people that, that put Pentecostal after the name? But rather, he said, to them that will ask. Hallelujah. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? You ask for it. It's that simple. It's not hard. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was, uh, I think I was around 21. Made a, made a phone call and asked somebody. Is a baptism, because I, I just wanted to know, I mean, I read up and had been listening and doing some study. I just asked this person, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for everybody? And they said, yes. I said, that's all I need to know. I, mean, I just want a confirmation. And my Bible says it is. And I was just, you know, I, for some reason, I just needed that confirmation. So I'm going to tell you this morning. If you want to know, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for every believer? Yes, it is. He is, okay? So then I went that night. And I, lay, I was on my bed. I was laying down. I raised my hands. I said, Lord, I want everything you've got for me. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I opened up my mouth and immediately began to speak in tongues. I didn't know what I was saying, but that was cool enough for me. I knew I'd been baptized in the Holy Spirit and never stopped since. Hallelujah. What I love about being baptized in the Holy Spirit is I can pray everywhere I'm at. I've been praying in my car, riding my motorcycle. When I'm out doing a lawn, whatever I'm doing, I can pray in the Spirit. And what I'm doing is I'm edifying my spirit. I'm having communion with the Father. And I'm empowering myself to live my life for Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited this morning. So we ask for Him. 
We ask for him. We ask. And then you receive. It's, there's no real magical, there's, this, this isn't magic or any kind of weird stuff. It's just a matter of asking and receiving. Asking and receiving. And then open up in our mouths and, and speaking the words that come out. It's that simple. It's not hard. Jesus made it easy for us. You don't have to crawl up hills through broken glass and the burning hot desert sand and barefoot through snow in order to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but rather you just ask and then you receive. I want to pray for you this morning. Maybe, you, you, maybe you've been seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for you to receive this morning. Father God, right now, for those that are listening online, those who are here in this parking area, for those that may be listening later through YouTube or whatnot, whatever the means is, Lord, right now I'm believing with them that they would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want you at home and those of you listening, if you want to receive, just raise your hand and you just ask, Father, please baptize me in your Holy Spirit. And I want you to open up your mouth and just let the words come out that God has given you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you again for baptizing us in, the, in your precious Holy Spirit, for enabling us not only to, to be a witness, but to live as witnesses. I thank you for enabling us to build ourselves up in the most precious Holy Faith, through speaking in tongues, and for empowering us to go forth and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank you for giving us the right words to say in the hour that we need to say them. And I call forth those that are in darkness. I call Call them out of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son, into the kingdom of light, out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. And I call forth laborers to go forth into this harvest right here in Sumter or wherever they may be to be that witness, to live as that witness. And I thank you, Father, for giving each and every one of us the right words to say in the hour that we need to say them. I thank you for empowering us to see miracles happen, to see signs and wonders happen, to see limbs grow back and eyes opened up, diabetes cursed and, and broken in Jesus' name. And, Father, I thank you for the witness of, of, that you've given us to live. I thank you for the good works that you've given us to walk in, and we call forth those as well in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I pray for those that may be in need this morning, whether it's a need for a job, whether it's a need for a healing, whether it's a need for a relationship restored, whether it's a need for a lost loved one or a, a, a child that doesn't know Christ. I pray that these needs would be met according to your riches and glory. I ask for, for laborers to go forth. God, for those that we don't have contact with that may be far away, I ask that you would send laborers in that area to meet those people's needs. And would you use us for the people that are praying over their family right here in Sumter to meet those needs. Would you quicken us and give us the words to say, and I thank you for operating through us. Holy Spirit, we yield to you this morning to have your will done, to have the Father's perfect will done in our lives. We love you, Father, and praise you. In Jesus' name, I pray for a fresh fire and a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to come upon each and every one of us and for a release of the gifts of the Spirit this morning. I call for these things to come forth in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you that it is finished, that it is done. Thank you for the work at the cross that Jesus did. We love you, Lord, and praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Glory to God. Happy Pentecost Sunday, everybody. Listen, if you've received Christ as Savior, we want to hear from you. Would you email us, send us, drop us a line, send us a note, call the office, however you want to contact us. If you want to drop us an email, you can go to our website, www.sumterfirstag.org. Down at the bottom of the webpage there, there is a prayer request form. Fill that out. You don't have to have a prayer request there. You can send us an email from that point right there. Uh, or you can drop by the office too. We want to hear from you. If you've gotten saved, let us know. We've got a gift for you. If you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let us know. We want to hear from you as well. For those of you that want to give, you can give online that are at home there. Again, on our website, you can click on the Give Now button. For those of you that are here, we have a, a sanctified can over here to my right. You can drop your offerings and tithes off as you leave this morning. Hey, thank you for coming. Uh, I love you guys. Go out in the power of the Holy Spirit today. You're dismissed.